so I, I feel quite choked by that, to be honest. Um, quite moved, and uh, hopefully there will be a few strands of what I have to say that in some small way picks up on some things there. Uh, can everybody hear okay? Is anybody that would prefer to have the microphone and uh, amp, or are you okay with uh, a natural voice? No? Okay. Um, it's great to be here. My name is William. I'm the Chief Executive of Signpost. We're a young person's counselling charity serving the communities of Watford, uh, Hemel Hempstead, Orinwood, and Rickman. Uh, we've been going since about 1973. Um, but in recent years we've been on a bit of a journey, thinking outside the box, or rather thinking outside the counselling room. And that's what I want to share with you. If you want to know more information about Signpost, we've got some of our annual reviews out and there's a stall outside, so I won't talk any more about Signpost. I want to introduce you to Olivia, our poster girl. So this photo was chosen because it speaks of isolation, abandonment, and being excluded. But a moment's thought, you'll clearly tweet that it's a complete deceit. Because she is connected to those people spinning around her. Because this photo was taken as part of a project our social group in Watford did, a photography project, and this was an experimentation with slow shutter speeds. And actually, what this, pic this picture, the story it tells, is that Olivia and the group of people walking around her on that project were building a, a portfolio of pictures to display in Watford Museum for a public exhibition. And so, far from being isolated, she's very much connected. But on one level, there is a, as often with pictures, there is a metaphor there. Olivia came to us at the age of 14, timid, lost, <coughs> self-harming, seriously self-harming. She once rolled up her sleeves by accident in front of me, and the barcode of scars <coughs> on her forearm is one of the most unpleasant things I've ever seen in my life, that somebody should want and feel so unhappy that they will cut themselves with that regularity. In September, she went to university, vibrant, full of hope, a very, very strong and powerful young woman. Now, signposts can't claim the credit for all of that. In fact, can't claim the credit for much of it. Because that transformation from the timid girl to the vibrant, powerful young woman was her journey. She did that. That was her growing up. That was her facing challenges. But what Signpost can take the credit for is that we were available for her when she needed that helping hand. And the counselling, as you'll hear later, transformed her. But for every hour of counselling Olivia received, she spent three hours with our social group. Because the counselling is, is great for making progress on an internal journey, developing techniques for how you're going to do things differently, but then that's one week. The other, sorry, that's one hour a week. The other 167 hours of the week, the young person is back in their life, living difficulties such as Sue has described. It's not easy to go home and put into place uh, the, the techniques that the counsellor has talked about to try and change the world around you. So the Psycho Social Group was designed as an opportunity to get young people together, meeting each other, being able to enjoy a sympathetic environment. It's not a youth club. Olivia wouldn't have gone near a youth club. Chaotic, often there's a lot of bullying and banter lots of energy, and that's great for some young people. But young people like Olivia, they want somewhere calm, somewhere they can quietly express themselves. So I just want to reflect, I've been very involved in the social group, um, and Olivia was an early, early member of the social group. Um, 
So I just want to reflect on, on what I feel are the four things that support outside the counselling room by engaging with youth work to support young people in that journey outside of the counselling room can contribute. And I'm going to reflect on what I perceive as the changes in inner voice that the young people have to go through. <coughs> the first one is being connected. It's wonderful to see young people doing arts and crafts activities. They're engaged and absorbed in a creative activity, but often they're chattering with each other. And that chattering can really be quite profound. They're sharing stuff that is very pertinent to their counselling, but they're doing it in a non-intensive way. There's no eye contact, there's no audience, there's no intensity. They can just quietly ripple their concerns and share their concerns. And through that sort of exchange with a sympathetic peer who maybe has been through similar situations, that inner voice that says, I'm a weirdo, changes to, they're all a bit weird too. And if we're all weird, that makes me normal. And that is a powerful journey that teenagers need to go through. But how do they do that if they're not in a supportive environment where they can explore weirdness? We also do challenging activities, getting them out, sailing, rock climbing, but even some more general things. <coughs> One of the most popular things we do every year is uh, take the young people off to a scout camp, we build a fire, cook sausages, get a guitar out, sing some songs. For many of the young people that come to the social group, They've never done that before. Now, I believe that's in one of the top 100 things every child should do in, uh, in the lists that often come out in colour supplements. And they've never done something really quite straightforward as to go into some woods and build a fire. And the inner voice changes from, I have to stay where I'm comfortable, to, I can do things. I can take risks. And nothing goes wrong. The third level in which it works is back to the belonging theme that John so powerfully uh, started the, the conference with. A lot of these young people, and as Sue has said, they get up in the morning, they dread going to school, they're disconnected with everybody around them, they haven't got a supportive adult. But they wake up, and one of the things that the, the social group most commonly members most commonly say is, I look forward. I have something to look forward to. I have somewhere I can go and be myself and have fun and laugh. And that inner voice changes from my life's a misery to I can spend time with people. People do value me. And then finally, one of the things we do at the social group is we focus on uh, other people outside the group. So fundraising, uh, Operation Rudolph, packing presents up for disadvantaged young people. Uh, a few weeks ago, the Watford Social Group, who had done a collage, uh, presented that to the Starfish Ward at Watford General Hospital. And the inner voice starts to say, I have a value to others. I am worthwhile. So I just wanted to share that with you because I think there is more that we can do as organisations and professionals to think outside of our own little boundaried professional box and link with other professionals, in this case youth work. But it goes further than that. Olivia, of course, came to us. She sought our help. She came to us. Now, we're a charity. Our mission is to serve our community. Our mission is to meet the needs of the community. We met Olivia's needs. What about the people who don't like us? What about the people who need us and don't seek us? At Signpost, this has been a fundamental change in our perspective, is 
that we have a duty to reach out to those young people <coughs> who need our support but don't seek our support. I think of them as stray cats. And what do you do with a stray cat? They're looking, they're outside, a bit like John's picture. They're outside the house going, oh, I quite like the idea of curling up in front of a fire, but look at that threshold. Oh, what, what's, what's going on there? I'm not familiar with that doorway that I have to go through. <coughs> so, of course, saucer of milk outside. The cat gets used to the saucer of milk. Bring the saucer of milk inside. Eventually, the cat is inside enjoying the milk and is nearer to the heart that it, it seeks. And in that transition for the stray cat, you've addressed two fundamental things. One is familiarity. The cat getting used to that doorway. The cat getting used to it not being a threatening place. And trust. The cat gets into a relationship of trust with the milk giver. Of course, sources of milk don't really work with teenagers, but pizza does. <laughs> so at Signposts, we run pilots, running what we call pizza and problem-solving groups. We uh, work with thriving families. I think they're now called intensive family support workers. Um, so we're looking at, rather than youth work, this is more the social care dimension of, of public services. We work with them to round up a few stray cats. Um, we, at Signpost, get a few uh, stray practitioners, sometimes uh, who, are, who are suitably flexible in their way of working. Sometimes that's harder than rounding up a stray cat, but that's a different story. And we get the two together in a group. They meet uh, regularly, not for many weeks. Usually the groups run for six weeks. And in that six weeks, the group, as well as eating pizza, they talk about general issues. Nothing too heavy. General stuff. Parents, every teenager's got something to say about parents. Bullying in the playground, similarly, every teenager can say something. By bringing them together, they start to learn that they've got a commonality. They start to learn that it's good to open up and feel connected with somebody when there's a problem. And then they start to learn that these adults that are facilitating the group are all right, they're good people, they, they can be trusted, and surprise, surprise, hey presto, one of them's a counsellor. And we have a, a rate of up to 50% of young people coming into our picture of problem solving groups will go on to work one-to-one -one with a counsellor or a coach, whereas previously they were considered hard to reach. All the barriers up, you've heard John and Sue very eloquently talk about the the, the psychology of somebody who's excluded. The best way of putting it, what that journey does, is uh, the words of one of our one of one of the, the group members who has gone on to be in one-to-one -one counselling. In the evaluation, he said, "I would never have done counselling because I'm not nuts." Note the. Note that barrier, one of the, the, the barriers that young people have. You know, counselling is all about middle-aged bearded men and couches talking about mothers, all of that stereotype. They do actually, a lot many people do see those stereotypes as a, as a boundary, as a barrier. So I'm not nuts. But I was, I'm happy to go and see Peter every week because he's all right. Peter's the name of the counsellor. The young person had gone from a position of stereotyping counsellors to finding something, somebody who was a perfectly normal, uh, compassionate, listening human being and going, oh, okay, I'll do that. So we apply, we've now uh, got BBC Children in Need funding. We were doing that in South Oxy. Uh, we've got BBC Children in Need funding to start delivering that in the, most, in the wards of uh, South and West Hertfordshire that have the highest levels of child poverty. So that's uh, Highfield and Lady Field in Hemel Hempstead, um, sorry, Highfield and uh, Grove Hill in Hemel Hempstead, Hollywell in Watford, um, County Hill in Boreham Woods. Um, and we're on a mission to try and scoop up a few more stray cats and engage them with counsellors. But we're going a step further than that. 
Um, Tokoro Borough Council have a project currently uh, on young people and emotional well-being. We're a partner to it. They have a masked drama uh, program. So now we're talking about councillors working with creative people. The young people come on a, a, a drama program. They get to explore their self-expression, but it's a masked drama. Their identity is protected. They can perform without it necessarily being there. But of course, self-expression is a messy business. People fall out, rub each other up the wrong way, nerves get triggered, people get upset, and there's a signpost counsellor on hand to deal with the fallout of whatever happens in that drama group. And once again, that trusted person there, week in, week out, who's always there to listen in a public environment, then it becomes the trusted person that you can have a one-to-one -one relationship with. One of the things we've noticed at Signpost is that we don't see as many particular categories of young people as we should. And LGBT, as Sue has explained, is one of the highest uh, you know, categories of the teenage suicide. And we don't, they may not be telling us that they're LGBT, of course, but we don't see as many LGBT young people as one would expect. That's not to say they should be in counselling, but we want to make sure that they're aware that the counselling is available if they need that adult because they don't have a, a listening adult in, their, in their, their homes or their lives. So we're working with Youth Connections. We're running similar to the pizza and problem solving, but uh, there's no pizza on, on these occasions. I think it's Haribo. <laughs> same, the same effect. So the young people can talk about um, what's going on in families not accepting, in coming out, bullying in the playground, general discussion, and the counsellor there is then becomes a familiar person they can go and talk to. Talk to. So I think what, what I wanted to share about Signpost Journey, we've not got all the answers, we're certainly not reaching everybody we should. But what we are doing is trying to look at that boundary that a profession has, and all professions have boundaries, and looking at where the lines are, where it can be blurred, where actually you can have a connection with another boundary and share some responsibility for a young person's journey. And who knows <coughs> for long? Youth work, social work, <coughs> trauma, who knows? But the main thing is, that it's having an attitude of the young people are not our concern just for that one hour a week. Our concern is to try and be part of the 160 hours, eight hours of the week. Not to be there all the time, but to be more involved in what happens in those other 167. And that way of delivery, which is not just delivering what we do, but thinking about the impact on the young person, is all about maximising reach and maximising impact. And that's where we as an agency are. But I want to come back to Olivia to finish off. Olivia is her name. It's not a made up name. That is her name. And why I can stand here and talk about Olivia as a real person without obscuring her identity is that journey from the timid girl to the confident university undergraduates, in that journey towards the end of it, she got to a point of strength where she wanted to speak out. She wanted to be visible. She wasn't afraid that people should know she had a hard time and needed a helping hand. She wanted to be part of a campaign, if you like, championing young people's mental health. And to such an extent, that she was prepared to go on local radio and tell her story. And if we can get the technology working, um, John is hopefully going to play that clip. I'm just generally a happier, more confident person, and it's something that I kind of forgot how it felt to be happy for quite a long time, and it's nice to get that feeling back. Locals make some noise for those who don't get heard. So Olivia, of course, is, is just one. What is really powerful about the social group is, is they've become mutually supportive. 
And unfortunately, I mean, we, we'll try this. Unfortunately, the, the sound may not work. Can we give it a go? Uh, um, they worked with a filmmaker and made a video. Now, when we introduced the idea, nobody was going to be in this video. No, I'm not going to go on film. Absolutely not. It's never going to happen. But actually, over time, they became used to the idea and produced this video. Which, if it doesn't work, it's on our website. Hopefully. We are the reason why it's a platform for people with mental health problems or even people just with problems in general like bullying or problems at home. In the future I want to be a photographer um, and that's and Simon has helped me build. Right, we're having a sinking problem, we're having to do audio and visual and separate things. Do you give it one more go of or...
but unfortunately with child performance licenses, Saturday morning clubs, rehearsals and so on, that, that was a little bit too much of a challenge. Uh, maybe it wasn't as much of a challenge as the technology has been. But <laughs> <laughs> See if we can work that out for next time. Thank you very much for your time.